Christine Martino is the Chief Revenue Officer at Screen Vision Media, leading national advertising sales for the company's robust cinema network, which spans 14,500 screens and reaches an annual audience of nearly 400 million. Please give a warm welcome to Christine Martino. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here at St. John's University tonight, sharing the night with all of you and these incredibly impressive women. Um, I'm going to admit, I was a little nervous to go last tonight. And then after hearing what these women have accomplished, how they've defined success, and the incredibly important topics that they have really, truly defined, I have got to say I'm more intimidated because I'm not going to do any of that. Um, we're going to go in a different direction with it, but hopefully you still have a good takeaway from our talk. So, success. It's the theme of the night. We're all taught our entire lives that we need to be successful. That's the goal, right? In life, in work, in general. We're all striving for success. Originally, I thought the definition of success was pretty simple. There's three things that could mean you're successful. Money, power, or fame. I never wanted to be famous. It seems like way too much upkeep, and power, way too much responsibility. So money, that was my measure of success. The more money you made, the more successful you were. Plain and simple, that's it. It's a no-brainer. Money, and what comes with it, Nice stuff. Money and stuff, that's success. Early on in my career, I would envy bosses that had fancy jewelry, purses, shoes. One of those things might follow me through my career, and it might have red bottoms on it, but I digress. I thought these people were so successful because they had all the things I didn't have. But what I realized as I grew in my career and could start to have those things is that stuff didn't represent the status of your success. For many, it was actually something to hide behind, costuming in that kind of fake it till you make it way, which I can actually respect, as long as when you make it, you share. Share your knowledge, share your wisdom. I had managers that would hoard their wisdom. They were so afraid if they gave it away, they'd become irrelevant. But I've learned the opposite is true. Sharing your wisdom doesn't diminish it, it amplifies it. So, what's wisdom? It's the ability to think and act using knowledge and experience. And it has the ability to truly transform into something powerful when it's shared. So I thought tonight I'd share a couple of my experiences with all of you. So I started off by mentioning my original definition of success was money. So growing up, I was always looking for ways to make money. Let's wind the clock back a little bit. I want to tell you about growing up in a house that bordered the 12th hole of Pine Hatron Country Club up in Albany, New York. This is where I had my first foray into sales. You could say my first office was a tree house, because it literally was, right off the 12th hole. Now, this hole, the 12th hole, it was a tricky one. Sharp dogleg left, right at the bend, sat my office. Balls were famously lost in the woods off the 12th, and I would gather them up, scavenging around, laughing as I saw the golfers, foolishly looking in the wrong places, cursing as they lost their ball. I started with a couple bags of balls, then I gathered enough that I started putting them in barrels in the treehouse. My mom might have thought I was making wine up there. She would have liked that better. But soon, I had a whole operation started. There was a washing station. I collected egg cartons at the grocery store to stock them up and store them perfectly. And every weekend, instead of heading out to a lemonade stand like the rest of the kids in the neighborhood, I got my folding table, a chalkboard, and sat myself right under a big tree on the 12th hole so no rogue slices could get me, and I set up my golf ball stand. 
The business plan was simple. 50 cents a ball, $5 a dozen, in an easy to carry egg carton. No bargaining, no haggling, or no sale. The golfers loved it, and so did I. Sure, it got a little tricky when one of them might notice their name on a monogrammed ball and somehow thought they could demand it back for free. I mean, I did have their name on it, but they had no idea who they were dealing with. This 11-year-old was not in the business of gathering, cleaning, storing, and returning golf balls for free. In fact, when someone would try and claim ownership of one of my balls, the price of buying it back doubled. It was a dollar with no refunds if I find it again. My father was an avid golfer at Pine Haven with his regular crew of buddies who probably found it really cute and adorable that his little girl was out on the course until one Sunday morning when he spotted his own ball in my pile and I made him buy it back at double the price, just like everyone else in front of his friends. To this day, he says that was the day he knew that I was gonna end up in sales. Now, I can proudly say my golf ball stand was a success. By the next summer, I had enlisted two employees, my mom and my sister. Demand was out the roof. By the end of the second summer, I had enough money to get a ticket to the hottest show in town, Britney Spears. Oh, can I tell you how successful I felt buying that ticket, even if I was only allowed to go with my employee, my mom? Making a sale felt great. Rewarding yourself for it was even better. The main lesson I learned from my first sales job was stand your ground. Be fearless, even when there's a 40-year-old man demanding his ball back. Okay, so let's go to a few years later. I've just graduated college, not as good as St. John's, but we're here. And I landed my first real sales job that didn't involve washing balls. Awesome, right? Account executive at Zoom Media, who sold the ads in the bathrooms of bars and restaurants. Now, I realize it's not as glamorous as it might sound to everyone, but at 22, I knew my way around a bar. So to me, I was so proud to have, in, to have been in ad sales. So I'd been working for a year or two and learned sales is a little tougher when you're not a cute 11-year-old on the golf course. I was cold calling and learning about rejection, lots and lots of rejection but I wanted to be fearless, and I stuck with it. Then, I finally got my big break. I had been chasing the A&E client over the past few years, because frankly, back then, cable TV was actually relevant. I found out that A&E was launching a new show called The Family Jewels. It was a reality show about Gene Simmons and his family. He's famously known for being a singer in the band Kiss, and impressing some ladies with some oversized appendages. I worked tirelessly to come up with a way to break this client who had turned me down so many times. But I knew this one was it. I did my research, I looked up the show, I looked up everything about it, and if I came up with something brilliant, something that's just perfect, I knew they couldn't say no. So here it was. We wouldn't just place posters of family jewels in the bathrooms of men's rooms across New York. What would we do? Talking urinal cakes. The client thought it was amazing. We signed the deal on the spot. Not only had I cracked the A&E client, but it was the largest deal Zoom Media had ever done. I was their star. And with that, I got the biggest commission check I had ever seen. I called my dad to honestly ask him how to set up a savings account, because before this, I never had anything to save. I tell him I've got this commission check, and he asked me so proudly, Chris, tell me about this deal you closed. And it was in that moment I realized I was about to say the words, talking urinal cake, to my father. And immediately, I knew I needed to start looking for a new job. What was initially such a success to me 
turned out to be one of the most embarrassing sales stories of my career. So you're all welcome that I shared it. I loved sales and finding creative ways to bring brands and their stories to consumers. But what was I actually doing if I couldn't even talk to my dad proudly about my job? Now, let's be honest, I wasn't selling cigarettes to children or alcohol to puppies, although my dog really does love beer, so maybe there's something there. But I wasn't proud of what I was doing either, and no commission check could change that. I needed to change that. So knowing I wanted to stay in media, I took my time and found something I was passionate about, the movies. People love the movies. You get to laugh together, cry together, have a communal experience, and guess what? Consumers are there willing to spend money to see that content. It's not a drunk guy at a bar. It's literally someone a brand wants to reach and talk to. Knowing this was a place that I wanted to work, I entered as an account executive, which at the time was a step backwards in my career. But I really believed it was worth it. One step backwards was one step ahead to reset my success story. Today, I sit as the chief revenue officer at Screen Vision Media, overseeing all sales and marketing with a seat at the executive table. Having learned and grown all along the way, and I'm still learning every single day. Screen Vision Media represents 50% of the movie theaters in the country, and I get to pitch clients about some of the most exciting content out there, the movies. Everything from the incredible success of Barbenheimer to fun facts like how Jason Momoa is a real life Aquaman. He graduated and has a degree in marine biology years before he started his movie career. I love it. I'm passionate about it, and I know I'm helping brands reach audiences in a safe environment. I'm confident that my own personal definition of success supports a path to happiness. I'm proud to be at a job I love, confident that I am useful to those around me, sharing my wisdom and learning from theirs, fearless and passionate about what lies ahead. I know someone is successful when they achieve their own personal goals, when they dare to follow their dreams and try to fulfill them, as silly as they very well might be. And you know what? I think it's perfectly fine to have your guilty pleasures. Thank you.